and have you uh, yes now this seminar is being recorded today i think there is it's just 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock over there yeah, it's 6.35. Uh, six? <laughs> Sorry, because of <laughs> us, you had to wake course, up early uh, today. No, no, it's uh, from, since yesterday, uh, the time zone has changed. Okay, okay. Again, we are one hour, 50, 30 minutes behind. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we'll begin. A very good morning to one and all. And uh, so today, we have organized this international seminar on the topic developing strategies to learn english we are really indeed fortunate to have amit sas a dynamic lady who is 22 years experienced dedicated resourceful and goal driven professional educator state trainer with a solid commitment to the social and academic growth and development of every child she is a committed English teacher, mentor, trainer with rich history supporting for pupils and colleagues in remote school setting. Experienced, uh, she has experience helping students attain target levels and assisting educators execute classroom activities. She is committed to safeguarding standards, pastoral support and promoting social and personal development. She has been honored with numerous awards by government and non-government organizations at national and international level. She is the she is on the board of study and she is a member on the board of study for textbook development for Maharashtra State Book Bureau, Balbharti, Pune. She has been interviewed by National Channel Sayadri for the show Sakhi Sayadri for Girl Child Education. She has presented research papers in many national and international conferences. She is represented Thane district as delegate from Maharashtra government to Singapore for understanding education system in Singapore 2017. She has published 40 articles, 40 plus articles in leading Marathi and English newspapers and magazines. She is a guest speaker for national and international webinars with UK, Finland, Russia, Sweden, and so many other countries. She is an online resource person and she has uh, developed content for government of Maharashtra. She has designed and developed teaching learning material to support online education. She has published two eBooks, Yes, Tejas, Story Beyond a Project in 1920, and Tejas, Quenching the Thirst for ELT Practices 21-22. She is a professional member of Institute of Global Professionals as Global English Language Practitioner. We welcome you, ma'am, and uh, before, we move on to ma'am's lecture. I would like to request our principal ma'am to welcome the audience. Over to principal ma'am. Namaskar. Today's distinguished guest, Mrs. Harsha Chawan and Mr. Nadim Khan. Dr. Manjushri Sardesh Pandey, convener of this seminar, esteemed faculty members, scholars, students, all the participants. Good afternoon and hearty welcome to this, this seminar, Developing Strategies to Learn English. A very relevant topic for everyone present here. English language is perhaps the most important language in this world, besides being the most spoken language. It is widely used as an official language in many countries. Without being proficient in the language, one cannot achieve the good career or good future. In India, it used as a second language. Although it entered our country through the British rule, 
I believe it has helped us grow as a global citizen. So from an align language to the library language and now today the second language. The journey of English has been quite interesting. It enjoys the status of teen language in the professional world. So it becomes imperative that we put our efforts to acquire proficiency over English language. For today's seminar, we have very brilliant, talented, competent resource persons who will undoubtedly enlighten us. So, with the various strategies to learn English, here I would like to congratulate convener of this seminar, Dr. Sardesh Pandey, and entire team of organizers. And my best wishes for the success of this seminar. Now, without wasting the time, I would like to hand over the mic and over the platform to the resource persons. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. And now, uh, students, without wasting much time, we'll move on to our uh, resource person. Over to Harsha, ma'am. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm really overwhelmed, overwhelmed to be here on this wonderful stage. And once again, from India, we, ha we had a wonderful host, Honorable Manjushri Ma'am, Honorable Principal, and all the team members from the college. I'm really thankful and grateful for the wonderful organization of this webinar series. Warm welcome to all the students. So without a delay, to start our today's presentation. So before I start, I just want I, I just want to request everyone that please maintain the classroom understanding and be relaxed, be frank with our two words, our the whole presentation. If you have any questions or any doubts during the presentation, you can put your doubts and questions in chat box. So once we can finish our presentation and discussions, we can go for the question and session. So can we start now? Hello. Is the presentation visible? Visible me. Okay. Thank you for the seminar on developing strategies to learn English. Dharmaratna Arts and Commerce College, Nagpur, Department of English. Mm -hmm. Overview of today's presentation. We will go to the startup first. Just have some fun and have some startup, some uh, relaxing activity. Then we will understand what exactly the concept behind that. After that, we will go for the realistic goal about fluency and ways to move. Then we will have CFR levels of language proficiency, which are required to develop the language. Then I will give you some useful tips. Hope you will like that. And then we will go for the question and answers. So today we are discussing on the topic, strategies that help students oral language fluency in English. So before that, can you type yes or no in your chat box? Do you speak English? 
Or do you like to speak English? Can you type yes or no in the chat box? Yes, I can see the responses in chat box. Brilliant. Yes, you all know how to speak English, right? Wonderful. Brilliant. Now look at the picture below. Answer the specific questions about it in as much as you can. Please observe, observe this picture. Are you able to see the picture? Yes, okay. Okay, now I will show you the questions. You can note down your questions or uh, one by one, we will again go back to the present uh, to the picture. The first question is, what is going on in this picture? Look at this picture. You can unmute yourself now. Raise your hands to answer these questions. Ma'am, the sheep are standing there on the road. Okay. And what is they, they are doing apart from this standing? They want to cross the road. Yeah, they are waiting for that. Uh, they are waiting to cross the road, right? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Next question. That's fine. What do you see that makes you say that? I will show the question again. What do you see? That makes you say that. How you came to the conclusion that ships are waiting to cross the road? Would you like to share with me? Anyone? Unmute yourself and you can answer. Okay, that's fine. Next question. What more can you find? Apart from this, the ships are there, they are waiting to cross and uh, almost two ships cross the road, right? and others are waiting. So apart from this scenario, what is you can find in this whole picture? Look at the picture. What you can observe from this picture? Is there something else which you would like to share or which you don't think that it's not from our country? from India. Which country you can see from here? Is it an India city? No, ma'am. It's like a New York, yeah, America. Yeah, so it's not from, so the structure, so the setting is not look like as a our native area, right? So this is what I am expecting. So when we have to talk about something, we have to speak about something. Sometimes we think more about it Normally, we can see many things, but maybe due to some reasons, we are not able to interpret with that thing. We are not able to talk more and more about that thing. And that's why today we will like to learn the strategies which will make you to speak more and more, to understand more and more, and make you more flexible to use any new language, either that is English or any other language, okay? 
So let's turn to the concept first. What is oral fluency? So when we're talking about fluency, the term itself is a noun, okay? The ability to speak a foreign language easily and effectively combined with the ability to effortlessly understand others who use this spoken language. So oral fluency, sometimes we refer to as spoken language. Most of the times oral fluency is dealing with the how we speak, how to speak, how effectively we can use this language because this is a foreign this is a foreign language to us. It's not familiar to her. We are not oriented with that. We are not using it as a first language. So combined with the ability to effortlessly understand, effortlessly do you understand? As much as we can use our mother tongue, it's called effortlessly. Okay. So oral fluency normally refers to how smoothly and quickly. Readers. So here you will get another thing that in reading also this term is get used. How to use, how to read fluently, how to read smoothly, quickly, with a, with a gist, with understanding and connected material aloud. So we can speak aloud. So when we are reading, again, we are speaking as well, right? When we are reading aloud. So how much expression the reader has in reading the passage is connected to the oral fluency. So this measure of pitch, stress, and timing is also called prosody. So that we will learn if we have to, uh, any opportunity to know about more the reading skills. So basically, when we're talking about oral fluency, it mostly related to the speaking as well as reading. And it's inter, uh, it's uh, intermediary step in reading comprehension most of the time. And that's why here we can learn more about speaking today so that it can easily make you to read as well as, okay? Apart from this, oral fluency also related to the writing skill. So all the skills get covered when we are learning oral fluency. Here I have one question that is becoming fluent a realistic goal. Do you think that? Is it necessary to speak fluent? What do you think? You can unmute your mic. Do you think that is it is necessary? We require to speak fluent. What do you think? Can you share with me? Don't hesitate. You can type your answer. Is becoming fluent a realistic goal? Means, is it necessary to speak fluent? We can speak English. That's fine. No. Okay. I got some answers. You know, some are typing yes. That's fine. But according to my perceptions, as per as my understanding, I think it is more realistic for children and young people to become fluent in a foreign language than for adults who begin learning later in life. So now this is your perfect stage to start using English language fluently. So you can set your goal now to become a fluent speaker of English language. So speaking is the fastest way to progress when learning the English language. In practical terms, the better you can speak the language, the better you can negotiate. And that's why it is very important. So the more fluent you are in English, the more job opportunities will be open to you and giving you a far wider choice of career prospects and upon higher pay. So whether for business or pleasure, firm grasp of English allows you to succeed in a wide range of countries that's why here we can say that English is not only for you to study, to know something. It is most used and widely spoken language in the world. And that's why we need to learn it properly, fluently. We need to use it in our day-to-day -day life. And I think we should be a good practitioner using the English language. It can expand your educational opportunities language of international communication and that's why we need to learn it its form its structure its way of using how to talk how to deal whatever okay traveling is a lot easier with a good knowledge of english and that's why 
when you have to tra travel abroad or when you have to travel in some of the, uh, uh, for, for example, you are going for the interview, you are going for, you have to go to travel for the visa, you have to travel for the airport. That time, most of the people are using the English language only. And that time, they are talking very professionally. And that's why we need to use English for traveling purpose as well. And of course, it's a dominant language of business, and that's why we need to use this. Language of media and literature is a career bolster, and it can give you access to the culture of English-speaking countries. And you can, you can make your learning fun. You can learn English very easily if you know the techniques and the strategy of using it. And of course, today is the world of internet we are using internet a lot of time but if you want to check any sources any resources any links any opportunities so that time the most of the knowledge the most of the resources are available in only and only in english language and that's why we need to learn the english language right so let's turn to the main idea of how we can become more fluent, how we can be ways to move towards fluency. Okay, so step by step, we will know that. First, if you want to be a good speaker, a fluent speaker, make English friends. How? You can dial number to your an English friends who is living abroad or maybe who are good in speaking in English. Or there are some applications online you can find where you will get animated form of the friends and they can talk with you in English language. Apart from this, they, they will have other languages also, but you need to choose specifically English language. And there you will find that you can make your English better than the existing day. Okay. And coming back to thinking in English in chunks. So what it's in chunks means we have to use, some, we can start with the small chunks, small, small phrase, phrases, small words, and then we will become a fluent user of English. Because we need to start from scratch and then we will achieve our goal to speak in English. Makes give up to your friend for clear pronunciation. So what exactly is, do you have any idea about that? Yeah, it means about the, it's a small word of pronunciation. We have to make our pronunciation very clear. So when I have to use any word, I should know its root and I should know how to pronounce that particular word. Once we get habitual of using the word correctly in a correct pronunciation, in a correct way, in a correct speech, then our language will become fluent, okay? So learn the basic building blocks of English, how to use the sentence, how to, uh, how, how to express particular thing. So we can start with the small sentence. For example, if I have to, uh, yeah, yeah, yesterday I met uh, with Honor Burma, Manjushri Ma on telephone. So, Immediately, I can start instead of asking, hello, ma'am, how are you? Huh? Okay, thank you. Instead, I can, what about you? How you feel? How your days are going on? You're quite a bit stuck with your work. So here makes my conversation more eligible, more fluent, and it like, up to the language and it's leading to the advance use of English language. So instead of using normal language, we can move to the advanced language. And for that, we can start with the basic building blocks of English and it will lead you to the, when you are using it regularly, it help you to use in an advanced mode. So then again, we have practice shadow. Practice shadowing means, yes, have you ever heard about that? How to speak with that? Yes. 
Yes, think about that. I just want to know from you. You can type in chat box. Have you ever what? Practice sharing means what? Uh, I think it's, yes. Someone is typing, right? Yes. I'm waiting. Okay. So here, basically, that's fine. Okay. No worry. When we are thinking about using English in day-to-day -day life, when we are thinking about using English in a small way, in a small, uh, just now I mentioned about the small, small blocks, I have to improve my vocabulary as well, right? So practice sharing is dealing with that. Be an active listener and then if we are going for the We are going for the goal of achieving our English language. That's why listening to a native speaker recording is called as a practice shadowing. Okay. And simultaneously repeating that native speaker. So while paying attention to the rhythm and tone of the speaker, we can imitate, we can follow, we can adapt all these things gradually, step by step. And it will help you to become a fluent user of English language because the way they are producing the sounds, the way they are using speech, the rhythm, the talk, interpreting, communication way. So it always helps us to follow the native speakers. And that's why we can practice this shadowing. Then again, we have listened to a bit of English every day. So here again, it goes to the podcast, video or music, anything which is available for you online, offline, or uh, in your surrounding area, or maybe in your schools. You can use that to improve your listening skills. Because as much as you will listen, you will become a fluent user of that. Work or volunteer in an environment with English customers or staff. So then you will say, ma'am, we are, we are still students and we are not working anywhere. Uh, but when you are going to the any supermarket, any mall, any cinema hall, or uh, any restaurant, or maybe a, any uh, official places, that time people are communicating with you in English language. So that time, you should know how to respond to that. For example, you are in restaurant. So in that situations, how to order your menu, how to deal with that, how to answer the course they have provided, how to make a choice. So all these things will help you to improve your English. So reading all these small, small uh, all these small paragraphs, all these small conversations, you can practice with that and then you can work, you can deal with any environment, any situation in any city. Apart from this, you can watch an English video clip every day. Films, sitcoms, cartoons, state talks, instructional videos that can be helpful for you to improve your oral fluency. The lip sync. The way they produce the language is very important. And so not only with the listening, more watching, because more visuals you will go, you will get more idea. Then read magazines, comics, or film scripts. Of course, you will get more and more idea for that. Write English letters or communicate in chat rooms. The chat rooms meet in your classrooms, in your group, or when you are doing a pair work, with some, uh, when you have some activities or on, on your English day or during in your English club. So you can use that. Study one-on-one -on -one with a teacher or tutor. So here you, you are fortunate that you've got a very supportive and very helpful teachers. And they're always for you to help you. 
and even they can give you one on one help if you are not you are not confident if you are scared of using the language so you can talk with your teacher and tutor so they will communicate with you and they will help you to improve your oral fluency recycle exercise from your course books course books are designed very well they are good in helping them they the school course books are the guides for your life long and that's why you need to follow the your course books so all, all the exercises given in your course books either they are really, they are connected with the listening activities reading speaking writing anything you need to solve each and every activities given in your course books and also the related materials provided by your teachers because it will help you to understand the language forms and its area how to use in different different settings okay. there are again more ideas you can use uh, to move towards friends i want to see okay are you should i continue yes ma'am yes yes ma'am yeah. please continue That's So practice speaking with other English learners using video chat. Of course, it's a wonderful idea. You can call me on my um, WhatsApp. You can do the WhatsApp class, Skype class, whatever the calls are available for you. Duolingo is available. Duolingo is wonderful idea to use the English language. Okay, so you can do that the uh, with the friends and even you can make the online friends. You know that there is a community. If you are connected with the open learning community. you will get many online friends they are not known to you but they are practicing just like us so make such online community which can help you to practice more and more about english keep a vocabulary notebook so record new words and phrases when you want to get a new word so here here i am going to um, outside places and many times during my, my workplace or maybe in my study uh, places so there i found me people are using uh, different vocabulary so i heard that vocabulary if i am not able to understand i immediately note down uh, in my ebook and uh, immediately i start to searching uh, i have an online dictionary oxford dictionary in my phone oh the word is that so immediately i cleared my doubt so this help you to improve your vocabulary every time keep updated yourself don't use with the all the old vocabulary so try to, learn, try to explore new vocabulary for your improvement learn informal informal english slang and idioms so of course you know that how we can use no instead of the normal english language we can use advanced we can use a more sophisticated more enhanced more developed way to improve our language apart from this learn collocations and phrasal verbs collocation here we will find that in grammar you have already studied that collocation so go with that collocation instead phrasal verbs instead of using a long lengthy sentence use collocations phrasal verbs as well okay then jump back into learning english after you have fallen out of the habit and continue where you left off sometimes you will not get success sometimes you fail down you are not able to communicate properly at the initial stage maybe you will not get success but again go back where you left where you have where you find that you were not able to good where you were not able to come out from that situation again work on that and start again there is never a late there is never a, we can say that every night has again the morning so just like it would be never late to do a good thing to learn anything in our life okay so go with that make use of every opportunity to use english and never be ashamed of your level whatever the level i belong to the tribal area i never heard english language instead of that i heard the local different different types of languages never got the opportunity so we started our learning journey english journey from the year 7 so you are fortunate that you got the opportunity to start it from year 1 how lucky you are but still we are not caught up with the uh, things how uh, how it will go smoothly and that's why we are hesitate to use the language 
or maybe the speaker who is standing next to us is able to speak more and more a fluent language and we just ashamed of your using that level so we are starting uh, keeping a mum for that we are not able to communicate we are not trying to react or respond to that person and here we fell down because though you are doing wrong though you are not able to make exactly you can grab that opportunity to communicate to use to talk to speak and here you will get idea how to you can improve your life so find a mentor who has time to chat with you once in a while maybe more the most of the time it should be an advanced learner teacher or native speaker improve your self confidence in speaking english learn how you sound so you can record your speaking or you can take participate participation in your school activities elocution speak speech competitions and uh, apart from this debate classroom activities this will help you to improve your self confidence never hesitate to use the language don't use a bilingual dictionary means you need to use only english to english dictionary do you understand bilingual dictionary have you are you using bilingual dictionary or you are following only english to english dictionary can you type in chat box which dictionary is you are following yes type in chat box which dictionary is you are using Okay, please type in chat box which dictionary you are using. If you are, if you found any word difficult, yes, I got one answer. Oxford dictionary, great. Okay, apart from this, please mention the names, whatever you know. Next one, Oxford. Oh, great! I am really overwhelmed with this response. So. it is good to start using an english to english dictionary okay to improve your fluency as it keeps you thinking in english rather than translating and it also gives you an alternative okay for expressing a word or phrase and that's why we need to use english to english dictionary so here i would like to recommend you cambridge online learners dictionary you can note down this Cambridge Online Learners Dictionary. So this will help you. So if you are not able to buy that dictionary, but you can use it online, it's really ideal way of improve your English language. Okay, and it gives you an audio of the British and American pronunciation, and that's why I'm insisting instead of hard copy, use this online copy because you will get sound practice. exact how to produce that particular sound how to produce that particular word how to respond if somebody use that word so you will get each and every area you will get the similar words opposite words everything you will get anonym synonym everything okay and even the use of that uh, the function is category is form is types everything you will get online there and even the pronunciation of all the things okay and that's why you should make a list of pronunciation which especially the word is new for you and good phrasal verbs you can use when you are using this dictionary so these are all the ways to improve your english language in a oral way okay now uh, just think more about that if you have to become a good user you have to become more fluent what you will prefer would you like to be a fluent speaker or would you like to be a perfect speaker what do you think you can admit yourself what would you prefer a fluent speaker or a perfect speaker or you can use the chat box as well then to be fluent speaker fluent speaker good i like your answer i appreciate 
that you uh, your thoughts are very clear. Thank you very much. So here it is very important to be realistic about your goals. As long as you are clear most of the time and don't hesitate too much or take too long to get the point, nobody will even notice. Okay? And here you can point out nobody will even notice. It is also important to understand that even native speakers can have fluency problem with unfamiliar, unfamiliar language areas. Have you ever noticed that? Yes, they also made some mistakes. And when they are nervous, they are sometimes not fluent. And that's why we should prefer on take our time, take a breath, and take some pauses. When you get nervous, that time don't produce the language. So here, it will help you to avoid the fillers in your English language using. Because most of the times we are using the fillers. You know the fillers? So all these fillers from our mother tongue we are using. And it makes it makes understand the person next to you that you are not a fluent speaker. So to avoid these fillers, these gaps, and uh, to avoid to make uh, the uh, next two person to understand that you are not a good user of that native language, just stop, take a breath, and use the quality communication, healthier communication. Don't try to be perfect every time. We try to be a fluent speaker. Okay. So now, before leading to words. Um, can you share with me what problems normally you fra uh, fear faces when you are talking in English? When you are speaking, uh, what do you feel that uh, you are not? What makes you think that you are not able to good uh, speak in English properly? You are not good in talking with the people. You are not good to talking uh, communicate with the people. What makes you? Are you scared of something? You can unmute yourself or use the chat box. Yes? What makes you think that? Mm, yes, I got some responses. What do you think? Yeah, okay. You get you get scared, okay. You're not able to use. That's fine. Have you ever hesitated when I when you're using words, phrases, or expressions? Have you hesitated? Yes. Most of the times we get hesitated to using all these things, and we feel embarrassed, right? Oh no, my my language is not good. I'm not good in speaking. No shit. So we just think that oh. Instead of that, why people are not using mother tongue? Why should I use? So this all thoughts comes in our mind when we are not able to use the language properly. Sometimes it takes an extra time to get to the point to the people, right? But and I sometimes, yeah, and sometimes it gets strange responses or confused looks and this affects our confidence. So these problems we are facing. And often we have repeat certain words and phrases. Most of the times when we're talking or communicating, we are not getting the exact words. So we are repeating our words continuously. Or in our talk, maybe we are using the same words many times in our uh, discussions, in our talks. So if, uh, even you notice in the films also that uh, people used to ask that how many times these words is used during their conversation. So it happens because we are not... Okay, can anyone uh, please uh, mute yourself if you want to say something? Students, please mute your mics. Please mute your mics. Mrunal, if you want to ask something, have you raised your hand? Please mute your mic. Uh, Thorani, ma'am, also, I would like to request you to please uh, mute your mic.
Yes, so this make, yes. Uh, so this makes us unsure if we sound clear in English or not. And that's why we have to use all these ways to move towards fluency. Even if we can use e-learning strategies, you know that it's worth nothing that all steps to fluency state here are based on the activities we have designed, use a part of e-learning strategy, right? We can use the technology more and more for that. So instead of using technology for the unwanted reasons, we can move on the good reason for that. And sitting in front of our computer, you can have all the tools you need at your finger points, right? You can work on that effectively and speaking skills can be improved. And one more thing I would like to suggest that you can avoid translating. Learn to think in English. Many people suggested us that how I can think in English. But of course, it is the natural reflex when you can't find the word or expression you need to turn to your language and its translations. So here, it does not work off of the times. We have to think in our mind as long as about the particular about word. The which... Yeah. So we need to set our goal of the structures, everyday phrases, order of elements, verb forms, sound system, cultural references, as well as concepts that we do not need to translate directly. And that's why we need to mo use more and more vocabulary. And we need to work on that collocations, phrasal verbs, vocabulary in our day-to-day -day life. And the, this process uh, will give you detail about the process of how to use the fluently, the particular area of language. And you don't start learning how to think in English because all this will give, once you go to the structure and form, you don't have to think in your mother tongue. And that's the effective way of train your mind. So train your mind by thinking in English. And it will help you to improve your confidence as well, right? So here, here your journey will take you to the next two level. Your journey to foreign language fluency in six stages now. So once you get idea that the ways we just learned about how to become a fluent language user, we can use the CEFR structure of Cambridge, right? So here, basic will start as A1 and A2. Independent speaker or language user means B1, B2. Proficiency means C1 and C2. So in A1, you have only just begun. Every day is mixed between, wow, that's so cool. What? All while juggling, trying to remember everything. So here you are started. So maybe we are at uh, stage A1 and A2 now. But within this such practice, the ways which are suggested now, we can understand the language, mostly main ideas and very familiar subject areas. So try to learn every subject concepts, the main idea, the concept, the way of how you can in future focus. You are now in maybe in year 11 and 12, right? So you are leading to the different faculty now in future after your 12th. So maybe you go for the engineering, your medicine, so uh, banking, or maybe teaching profession, or many, uh, maybe in art or music, anything. So just try to collect your vocabularies in such area. Try to know more about, try to know the prospects of the faculty. Try to know the colleges which are having such courses which are related for you. So try to find out those resources from the internet here. You can use the technology. It will help you to know more about that faculty. And while you are going for the understanding of that faculty in depth, you can improve yourself more and more. So I'm pretty sure that you will be more progressive and engaging speaker in future. And it will lead you to B2 and C1 within a few months of the time. And finally, you will become a C2 level speaker in future. Until you can be, so within one year, you can be 
uh, C21. Even they have some exams also, some qualified programs the, the Cambridge is running. Even you have some, uh, you can go for the um, Honorable Manjushi Ma'am, we will provide you the article. Uh, I have written for the uh, Shikshan Sampraman. They have, there I have mentioned some applications, the tools. You can refer that applications for your improvement. Which area you want it to improve, just focus on that only. Okay. So in teaching also, teachers are using different strategies and methods. Respond to your teachers. Be active person, proactive person in your classroom. Until you become a proactive, you won't be successful in any area, not only in the language area, in any area, in your any part, any prospect of your life. So don't learn only the vocabulary list. Learn to adapt it and how to make the application of that vocabulary in your talk, in your speaking. Okay, and it will make you help you understand. So when you are now into trying to learn, to understanding the more CFR levels of language proficiency. So here you are, if you are now at the beginning stage, so you should know at least 500 words. And you should use and understand basic phrases when speaking slowly. That's fine. You are speaking slowly at initial stage. But when you go to the elementary, so when you develop with these 500 words and application of those 500 words in your speaking, in your oral fluency, then you will get idea of using 1000 words. So you can add in your dictionary means in your mind, in your uses, 1000 words and understand simple expression and express immediateness. It will lead you for the elementary and intermediate level, 2,000 words, which can where you can comprehend common issues and improvise your discussions when you are talking with your teachers, when your colleagues, when your, your classmates, when your teachers or in your speech or any competitions or where you are in, in your public places, in your official places. So in this 2,000 words will help you to communicate with people confidently. And when you get all this confidence, you will lead to the B2 level, upper level with the 4,000 words uses. So here day by day, when you are communicating, talking more and more, it gives you more addition in your brain, in your uses, which will lead you to understand complex topics and engage in spontaneous speech. And this is what we want to be improving in our life, spontaneous speech. If you call me today and if you are talking with me, that's fine you are at this level. But when you are regularly talking with me, one day you will be this person, spontaneous. Okay, and this we want, this we expect as a teacher from each and every student. And when in your future, when you become a younger more and become an adult person, of course, this 8,000 words treasure will help you to express ideas fluently and spontaneously without any strength. In mastery, so when you, if you qualified any exams of the language exams, IELTS are there, Cambridge exams are there, so TOEFL uh, and then uh, ESL exams are there. So if you studied with us exams, you will get the treasure of 16,000 words to comprehend virtually everything read or heard. And this is what we are expecting as a fluent language speaker. So with this B1 and B2 level, it's okay for us at our initial stage to become or to improve our oral fluency, okay? So don't take too much stress. Step by step, gradually you can improve. And for that, this is the key of your success for the oral fluency development grammar. Communication. Follow the rules. Yes, the rules you are getting teach in your classrooms is very important. Language, speech, idioms, dictionary. Understand each and every concept. Understand the structure and the form. Prepositions, education, books. Yes, books will give you all the idea of using the language. To think in English, to use in English, to express in English. Everything you will get with the books only. They are the real gurus. They are the real teachers. And then we learn from the books. That's why we are teacher now. So you can be teach anyone. You can educate anyone with the help of the books as well. And the experience and the practice makes you the perfect teacher. Okay, so be your own teacher.
with the help of the books as well. Follow the syntax, the structure and form, how to use the language, okay, vocabulary. So this is the key of coming back to the our fluency. This is what we are expecting when we are developing oral language at our core. Vocabulary and morphology, we need to improve just now we discuss about that. We should use the syntax, the sentences we can use, the structure we can use in our day-to-day -day life when we are communicating, when we are talking, speaking, delivering the speech anytime. Phonics and spelling, phonemic awareness. So most of the times we are just trying, oh, why should we learn with that? Uh, so letters are not important, sounds are important. We are not using letters. A, B, C, D, we are not using. We are using a, b, k, right? We are not saying that A, if I had to say awkward. So I will not say A, W, awkward. So I use O, K, W, D, right? So this, we are producing the sounds. That's why we should learn this phonemic awareness. And phonemic awareness means how to produce the sound, how to use that later, how to talk, how to combine the word. This is called phonemic awareness. Then comprehension, you have many texts in your course book, uh, how to comprehend that, just cope with that and follow the written expression as well because oral fluency is always leading to that improvement level. So here again, here are some of the five uh, useful tips, 50 useful tips. Uh, you can follow that. Be realistic of your English learning goals. Practice speaking as well, not just reading and listening. Whenever you get chance, use English. Get native English speaker and friends. Then don't afraid to making mistakes. I also learn from a mistake and still I'm doing mistakes. So don't hesitate to do the mistakes. Use simple sentences at first and then progress more complex sentences. I told you that when you started with that 500 words, you are simple. And when you are leading to that A to B, B1 level, it's a progressive. Okay. So get reliable English learning courses. You have many courses online. They are free also. Okay. Or maybe in a reasonable prices. So your teacher will guide you that which you can follow that. Make an effort to improve your pronunciation. Try something extra, not the regular one. So not using the one word only, not responding in one word only. Use the full sentence or use the advanced language or the way which can be impressive. So and uh, listen to English language music, learn some English tongue twisters. Tongue twisters are very helpful to improve your English. Accept English and all its uniqueness. Don't blame other languages or don't um, put some blame or uh, don't make mock, uh, don't mock other languages. Because every language has its own essence. So accept that uniqueness. We should be proud of our own language, but we should not neglect the importance of other languages, and especially the English now in today's way. Okay. So try living some new words every day. Learn new words. Try some public speaking. Let English be around you. Make a surround of English language using, okay, around you. Become a part of conversation group. Read books, read books, and read, 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 read. Watch videos and popular songs. Try to think in English. Practice paraphrasing. Conduct small talk in English. Try creating your own responses. Be a confident speaker. Of course, it all the techniques will help you to be, become a confident speaker. And of course, then this practice will make you... The mirror practice is always when you are scared or afraid of to talk with words. Sometimes it works, but don't use it uh, regularly. Uh, instead of that, uh, have a natural communication, okay? So I advise you not to use mirror uh, practice daily. Learn to say things in your own way and master some specific phrases. Phrases are very important. Chunks, phrases, and everything is very important. Don't uh, then retail story jokes in English. Read more books. You will find the structure and uh, the more vocabulary in there. Engage yourself in English activities. You have English clubs, clubs in your school. Uh, on uh, on Saturday, you're doing, with the help of the Chase, we have that opportunity to uh, work in the English uh, day. So utilize that time. Debate in English. Don't rush to your speech. Don't make haste. Don't try to uh, finish your speech. Let the people understand you. Let the people hear you. Okay? Listen to them and respond to them and make them to re respond to you also. Okay? Listen and try to sing and rap music. It's a wonderful thing too. 
use the sound practice, phonemic awareness. Really, it's worth. So try interpreting and interjecting politely. The most important thing about English language is it's not a harsh language. It's not, it should not produce in a high pitch. It should not talk in a high level of tone. It is very polite language and it should be produced in a normal tone. Even if you are angry and if you have to send something in anger, that time also your tone should not be just like a tone of your mother tongue. It should have a certain level and that you will learn when you listen to this um, or watch the videos. So understand there is always room to improvement. Nothing is to be let. You can improve from today also. So speak in English, you know, and try to be realistic. Don't make high goals, but make some goals and try to achieve your goals. This is very important for us. If you have any question and answers, you can ask me. And thank you for joining me today. Feel free to ask the questions if you have any. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Students, if you want to ask some questions, please ask. Hello. First of all, tell me, did you like it? And Harsha ma'am, please don't leave. You can make me the host. Harsha ma'am. Yes ma'am. Yeah. Students, it was such an interesting yeah, session you. and uh, madam has really, she has talked uh, about so many different, different strategies. You know, if you really follow all those strategies, English is really not a difficult language. It's a, really a very interesting language. Yes, Praveen, uh, Bagre, if you want to ask anything, please. No, ma'am. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Your name, I'm not getting. Madam, uh, Harsha. Yeah, I'm trying I... to make you. Yes, so I'm uh, getting your name. Manjush. Okay, wait, wait a minute. Students, anybody? Ma'am, I think they've really enjoyed yes, you got, and uh, we have really you have now, you. Who's now. Yeah. So if anybody you, wants to ask. Thank you, Arsha, ma'am. We've recorded yeah. your lecture and we'll be giving yeah. this lecture to all the students so that yeah, they will you, really, Ms. yeah, as and when they uh, can join, they can really follow all the strategies. So we have uh, recorded yes. your session. Thank you very much. And uh, and now for a vo uh, formal vote of thanks, I would like to request Yogesh Nikam, sir, to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Have a wonderful afternoon to all. and. Uh, good morning to Harsha ma'am, respected resource person of persons of this international seminar, Harsha Chauhan ma'am and Nadim Khan sir, respected principal of the college, Dr. Tanuja Nafade ma'am, head of the department of English, respected Dr. Manjushri Sardesh Pandey ma'am, all my colleagues and dear students, I express my sincere gratitude to honorable resource person of this session. Harsha Chauhan, ma'am. Ma'am, you have thoroughly guided us on the developing strategies to learn English. And I'm pretty sure that our students would surely apply all these strategies to improve their English and fluency as well. Thank you for your vibrant and interactive session. You, I'm thankful to our principal, Dr. Tanuja Nafre, ma'am, for her encouragement to conduct such programs. Thanks to our head of the department, Dr. Manjushri Sardesh Pandey, ma'am, who always tries to, to do something different and goes extra mile to make students equipped with all the skills required in this age of competition. Thank you so much, Manjushri, ma'am. I'm also thankful to all my colleagues and at last all dear students who have wonderfully interacted with Harsha, ma'am, and made this session very interesting. Thank you so much. Over to you, Manjushri, 
thank you, uh, Nitam sir. And uh, students, now we have another interesting session, which is going to be uh, taken by Dr. by Mr. Nadeem Khan. Thank you, Harsha ma'am. We'll be in touch with you. And okay, uh, thank you, ma'am. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Over to Nadeem Khan, sir. And uh, Nadeem Khan, sir, I've made you the host. So you'll be able to share your screen. Uh, yes, sir, is there. And at the outset, we begin a very warm welcome to Nadeem Khan, sir. And uh, students, you are fortunate to have such a such an industrious person as resource person. He is going to talk to us about, I think, incorporating ICT in our studies. And he'll be uh, explaining you his uh, topic. And uh, before we begin, I would like to uh, request Arushi ma'am to introduce uh, Nadim Khan sir to the students. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Arushi Valgaukar, Faculty of English Department, R.S. Mulde Dharampet Arts and Commerce College. I am so pleased to be uh, with you all, and it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Nadim Khan. He is teaching English at Nutan Kanya Junior College, Bhandara, for last 12 years. He graduated from J.M. Patel Commerce, Bhandara, and currently pursuing PhD from Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marakwara University, Aurangabad. He completed train the train, uh, trainer course from IFI to Hyderabad on railroad sponsorship on nomination of his mentor, Dr. Amul Padwad. He has also worked as mentor for RMSA, British Councils, ILS Project and Tata Trust, Tejas Project. He is working with SIM and State Project Coordinator and has designed blended training modules for large-scale training programs in his state. He is also working as assessor for NIEPAS school accreditation program called Shala Sindhi. He is me member of Board of Studies at Maharashtra State Bureau of Textbook Balbharti Pune. He is active member of Bhandara English Teachers Club and treasures of AINET Association of English Teachers. He co-owns a startup called ProVigil, which caters to e-learning needs of teaching and training institutions. But it's not just his professional achievements that makes him exceptional, sir. Sir is also passionate about wildlife photography and teacher uh, sorry, tiger conservation. Recently, he has been appointed as honorary wildlife warden by government of Maharashtra. You can reach out on uh, to him on his Twitter handle at the rate Nadim Khan Life. Today, Mr. Nadim Khan will be sharing his insights on developing strategies to learn English. Without further delay, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Mr. Nadim Khan, sir. Welcome, thank sir. You, thank you, thank you ma'am. I'm going to share my screen now. Feedback, please. If this is visible to you. Yes, sir, it's visible. Yeah, thank you very much. So today we will be uh, looking at different technology tools and some of the apps that are very useful for students. And uh, at the end of this webinar, you will be able to understand the benefits of technology and using it for your benefit. Explore the potential of technology in education. And we will try to understand your perspective and how technology can help personalize learning for you. And we will be discovering the need for managing data and how to do it using Wakelet. And we'll discover how to make the most of networking online by using the social media. So technology does influence language quite dramatically, said David Crystal. He's the great, uh, great specialist and old man of English language teaching throughout the world, very well known. So with the invention of printing, uh, it the printing, uh, uh, invention by Gutenberg, it affected the use of language largely. Like with the onset of printing, there was a large scale circulation and printing of the literature throughout the world. Then came the telephone that was the oral medium of communication and broadcasting came in the 20th century, which was uh, which is also an audiovisual mode of communication. 
with the arrival of uh, internet in the year 1991 entire world came together and we became global denizens of one single global village and with more uh, inventions came the google in 1999 and it so it uh, it changed the entire like uh, scenario with its search facility but uh, language uh, as you can uh, see uh, there is a recent uh, onset of media and social media uh, like uh, facebook youtube twitter and whatsapp as you can say it got evolved uh, slowly and gradually like before facebook there was orkut but it was nothing but but sharing of some comments and facebook uh, uh, photographs nothing else but when facebook came the tagline was what's on your mind so it uh, it like it prompted the people to share different like uh, their thoughts what's on their mind or the pictures or update like i am meeting or i am having uh, my vacations so it all started people started sharing all these things and with that change with that prompt like what's on your mind there was a lot of uh, use of language involved there then uh, came the twitter which was like uh, which was a lot, which is a micro blogging site you must be aware of twitter as one of the social media platforms and it allowed people to express themselves in only 140 characters so now uh, people became more aware of uh, sharing some serious things in very short number of characters like only 140 and then came the revolution called whatsapp in 2009 and the video revolution called zoom in 2011 but the real fruits of uh, zoom we tested it during the covid pandemic and a lot of reading and a lot of language exchange that was happening through the text that got converted or evolved into the audiovisual content so all these are technologies as you see and all these technologies has played a very important role vital role in development of language in the modern age now uh, uh, benjamin bloom one of the linguists had uh, like created his own taxonomy which stated that there are different stages of uh, like learning like remembering understanding applying analyzing evaluating creating like if you go to the uh, d.a or b.a course after your degree course you will be taught this in your classrooms of teacher education that is moving from lower order thinking skills to the higher order thinking skills so there are some activities that we keep doing like we bullet point we highlight then we search so these are kind of like lower order thinking skills and activities but then we move on we annotate we tag some people on online we prepare some charts we do editing on microsoft word or excel or powerpoint we present using powerpoint so that is applying your knowledge then we create mind map we create surveys respond to the surveys uh, we create different links like short links google links so this comes under analyzing finally uh, some people are there who are creators of these uh, like i can say content and uh, creating animation writing blogs uh, creating your own video logs we call it vlogs creating your films short films podcasting like uh, it's similar to broadcasting but use of internet like uh, fm to podcast your thoughts publishing self publishing so all these are different tools we uh, as students we are involved in these activities and we move from like only user of technology and we gain some insight and knowledge and we become creators of the content using this technology now uh, there is one word called digital footprints uh, is anybody aware of this word digital footprints i am looking in the chat box for the responses if you know can you type just yes or why in the chat box why why or if you don't know you can just type n 
Have you heard about digital footprints? Or do you know about what digital footprints are? Yes. Ashish Mahajan says yes. Shamsundar says yes. Any other responses in the chat box? If you know what digital footprints are, or you can just type N if you don't know. Is that information about particular person? Okay, we'll see. Yeah, so digital footprints is as you can uh, see your own footprints when you walk on, uh, like if you walk barefooted on sand or anywhere, you can like any other person can see that somebody has taken this trail. So you, when you walk, you create a trail, you leave some footprints behind and other people can identify that, okay, somebody or this person has gone from this side. So similarly, on this in this virtual world, you visit different websites or you visit different apps or you make use of internet to do a lot of things online. So wherever you go, you leave some of your information behind. Like if you are very good on social media, so you go surfing, you like something, you comment somewhere, you go to Insta and you watch some kinds of reels you search some content on Google, you shop something from Amazon. So everywhere you are leaving some of your marks, some of your digital footprints, and this data is gathered in the background by the companies, those who are operating it, mainly Google and Microsoft and Meta, these three are the giants. So they collect your data and artificial intelligence works in the background and it shows you the similar kind of content or the advertisement. The one you have searched, you were on, uh, on this Amazon or Flipkart, you will definitely get it in other apps as an advertisement. So how this happens? Because you have left something, some of the information in, uh, in this virtual world and all these footprints are collected and your profile is generated and uh, like, there was uh, uh, a paper which said that Facebook has more than 3,000 point data of every person who is on Facebook. So uh, it, is, it is like that you don't know about yourself that much. The Mark Zuckerberg knows about you. So it is such kind of things, but there are certain rules that whenever you are online, when I'm talking about this online things, uh, this is like a disclaimer, it goes with uh, my presentation that there are certain golden rules that you should follow while uh, surfing the internet that you have to keep your username, username and password to yourself. You have to be responsible about the places that you go online because today's, uh, uh, today's apps or today's uh, browsers, they are smart enough and they alert you that the site you are going to visit is not safe, not secure, so you can turn back. Then you can uh, tell and show a teacher or adult anything that you see on the screen that worries you as a student. And you can, you have to like, these are the same rules that you have to follow. Fourth one is like, you have to look after all personal information by not sharing your or other people's home addresses, phone numbers or other details. Because if you share these things, all uh, your information can be sold by anybody. Like there are apps like Truecaller and you won't imagine all your information when it, it got hacked some uh, five years back, one person's information was sold, uh, was sold only at 10 paisa. So you can imagine millions and billions of accounts on Truecaller and one person's information, all such information is, was sold at only 10 paisa per person. Then you can be polite and kind to other people on while online, be responsible and never meet up with anyone that you have met online without your parent or teacher. 
so these are seven rules for my students and i have shared it with you now how many of you are uh, using google mail or gmail you can just type ps in the chat box if you are a user or you can some some of you have raised their hand yes so a lot of people uh, good 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 i am getting good responses so a lot of you are aware with the google mail or gmail and how many of you are aware of the technology called uh, chat gpt it's ai tool called chat gpt how many of you are aware of chat gpt yes quite a few responses about chat gpt also so last question uh, which social media site you spend a lot of time can you can you name the social media site you spend a lot of time over there okay whatsapp instagram any more responses google whatsapp insta okay so there are around how many participants more than 20 participants here and some have responded to this question so uh, this is a question to like other students okay sometime youtube also sham sundar good response thank you very much like uh, sometimes uh, there are people so sometimes there are people who are not on any social media site so this is a modern digital horror story that will show you how people meet one girl and one boy and one is a very tech savvy and social media friendly and other is you can see this movie and uh, try to like think over where you really exist in this world because we are talking about two worlds here one is the real world and one is the virtual world so i am playing this video for you please have a patient watching sarah thought she met the perfect man no did you fight her us look what she got oh no that's good was the perfect nightmare what yeah no not many social media social media Oh, this can't be happening. Oh no, Facebook. Can't find anywhere. Yeah, no, no. They don't know what he did last summer because it's not on Facebook. He is untraceable. He's completely off the grid. A ghost, if you will. He's not on Insta, LinkedIn, or Pinterest. And if you think he's on Snapchat, you're crazy. I mean, the man has no digital footprint. He's never even had a MySpace. Who is he? No. Oh, no, please. What? Yeah, no, no, any social media. No, you might have an opinion on something. How do you voice it? I'm not supposed to just tell it to the nearest person. What is this? I think it's an actual photo album. Where's the comments section? How do you know if people like them? Okay, yeah, he just yeah, yeah, he's there. So this this is this was a short movie that if uh, like a person is not on Facebook, does he even exist? That was the question. 
And uh, with this question, let's move on to our next presentation. And this is for use of like uh, social media tool or you can say social media website called LinkedIn. So how many of you have no uh, know about this social media site, LinkedIn? Responses, you can type in the chat box. Yeah, it's a very professional app. Good response, Kashish. So uh, this is like an overview of uh, what will be, I will be presenting to, today in my uh, next topic, like networking and developing your LinkedIn profile. Because I thought as a student, you need to like, you must be visiting Instagram, Facebook, and any other social media sites. But LinkedIn is like one thing that is going to help you in building your profile as a serious student or a job seeker because you are all students. Uh, yeah, Kashish is saying, yeah, yeah, you have used it. Good. As a student, uh, you will be like in your final year or in your whatever year you are in, you must be in search of a good job and good contacts, connections. So LinkedIn is a place where you can do networking. Now, what is networking? You can create your own professional network you, where you can share your thoughts about what you think about the different career options and your goals. You can write your own story that uh, you want to do this, your uh, statements. And it's a uh, networking basically is done uh, face-to-face -face and online. So for face-to-face -face networking, you can go and attend talks and you can go and attend workshops, conferences, and some professional events like Expo. But uh, networking online, uh, LinkedIn is a very good platform uh, where you can get in touch with the person whom you know face-to-face -face in reality and the persons or the professionals from your industry or the industry you want to work with. So you can grow your network, you can get in touch with people on LinkedIn and why it is important. It is not a place where you can get a job. It is not a like job portal like nokri.com or Monster, but you can get in touch with people who are looking for some real talent because creating a CV, uploading it on any website is a different thing and getting to know people, what they are doing daily, like it's a social media tool, but it is used for professional purposes only. So uh, to start with, what can you do when you go to the uh, LinkedIn? So you can find your friends, classmates, and these are other some uh, ways to get connected to them offline also and you can become become a member or alumni of some professional associations like clubs and organizations you can get to know different coaches faculty or academic advisors and you can visit your uh, alma mater that is your the previous school or college where you have st studied so linkedin is a place where you can find a good job but you are there not to find a job. That's, that's the trick. So you have to build your profile in such a way that wherever you are working or not working, you can just like uh, create your profile in such a way that people who want to hire you, who are looking for some people or, or brains to work with them, they will contact you and they will uh, ask you for uh, an offer they will give you an offer it is not a place where you go to people and keep asking that i want a job can you help me no it's not a place for job seekers it's a place where you can build your profile, build your profile. how you are going to build your profile on linkedin so this is a short video one and a half minute video by linkedin of about what linkedin is it will give you all the data then i will guide you for what are the key factors in creating your own profile? 
If you've ever received an email that says join my network on LinkedIn, you've probably wondered, what is LinkedIn? A simple answer is that it's the world's largest professional network, helping people find and share opportunities every day. But how is it relevant to you? Managing your career is just one reason to join LinkedIn. As you develop your professional profile, you establish an authoritative resource on your experience and capabilities that lets people find you when they search the internet. In two minutes, you'll be up and running with the most important page on the web you'll ever have. Do you know what people find when they Google your name? With LinkedIn, you'll have more control over what appears in Google results, and having a robust profile encourages people to approach you with opportunities. Many of your contacts are already on LinkedIn, and you can reconnect just by uploading your address book. This lets you stay in touch even as your contacts change jobs and email addresses. Your reputation is summed up by the relationships you've developed over your career. LinkedIn helps you maintain these relationships authentically. In addition, when you want to make new business connections, you can find people using LinkedIn search. Tool, then see who you know in common. This makes it easy to request an introduction from your trusted connection. You can also join a LinkedIn group where professionals in your field discuss issues and solve problems related to your industry. Link to your Twitter account to share tweets with your professional network, both from LinkedIn to Twitter and vice versa. And use LinkedIn's mobile application to stay current with your network wherever you are. These are just a few features that help you get the most out of LinkedIn. Whether you're working in an office or on the go, LinkedIn keeps you in touch with the people that matter to your career. And since signing up is free, LinkedIn just might be the best investment you'll ever make in your career. There are certain features like one that talked about groups. When like uh, there are groups where uh, people come together and discuss some serious discussion is happening there about the profession and the career and the industry. And you keep building your profile and you keep expanding your network when you are on LinkedIn. These are some uh, steps involved in profile development. You can sign up with your name, email address and password. You can either use Google Mail or your own email for signing up. Uh, adding location uh, adds value to your profile because people who want to hire some people for work in some location, some geographical area, location plays a very important role. Having a profile photo is also very important. Like, uh, yeah, because a lot of people, they create their uh, profiles, but they don't add photo. But having a good photo, uh, like the chances of hiring increase if you have a complete profile and without your photo, no profile is complete. Then one important thing is summary statement. It is like your own story and you have, it's like a statement where you are talking about your goals, what motivates you, what you can do, what skills you have, what is your superpower? You can mention in that summary statement and these are like highlighted under your profile. So how to write a stellar summary? This is one just uh, bullet point collected from one article that uh, I read on Forbes.com. And it says that keep in mind the audience you are addressing and uh, how do you want to make them feel? And do mention your accomplishments, your research work, your project work. These act as your superpowers, okay? And the example of one such statement is given here. That this can be your uh, summary statement, speaking about this sample. What skills you know, like Microsoft Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Tally, for example, Adobe, Canva. Now, a uh, lot of people think that uh, whatever work they have done, it is of no use when applying for a new place or new uh, position. But do mention that you have done some work and always used verbs like action words, like analyzed materials, conducted individual some survey, or led a team of so-and-so people, or like reported this thing. So 
always use some action words so that uh, people get attracted to your uh, experience section this is one another example if you know any other foreign language or whatever language you know you should mention it under the skills skills are also important completing your profile is the key and final words about linkedin you can use this to browse job descriptions set up job alerts you should follow the companies the influencers and industry people for uh, getting to know the latest trends and news about what is going on well and what is not going well down in the industrial sector so uh, we will have question and answer later next thing i wanted to share with you like we are nearing uh, towards the second part of our webinar today and this is a tool called wakelet so tell me in the chat box how many of you know about this wakelet you tell me in the chat box why or and no responses okay so i assume that yeah how many of you know about wakelet this is a website and an app and an educational tool for curation collaboration bookmarking okay so wakelet could be new for you but uh, it's over 5 years that wakelet is in use and it has replaced a lot of other tools like uh, evernote keep for curation content curation and collaboration so wakelet is a free platform that allows you and your students to save organize present and share content across the web so you come across many things when you are studying anything or when you are reading any article online or you are searching for your notes anything and you are reading it and you feel that there should be some place where i should save it so what people usually do they select all the text they copy it they go to some other place and they paste it and then they forget so this happens and they when they need their those things in real in actually so what happens at that time you forget where where have you kept it so it becomes very difficult to curate all the information all the data you get online so this is one solution for all your online like problems uh, it is not like zoom wakelet is like a curation and compilation tool where you can share anything anything i have shared whatsapp chats also i have shared bookmarks i have said my bookmarks there bookmarking is like we say uh, we bookmark many websites on our browser so when we keep on adding those bookmarks bookmark is just saving that website and when it goes beyond 100 200 500 it becomes very difficult to manage and search so wakelet is a place where all these things can be done very easily and it is visually so very beautiful that you get to different folders and different links bookmarks compilations very easily so i will explain wakelet in three simple steps first whatever place you go be it your cloud twitter social media handle or browser you can bookmark just anything just anything youtube video also you can bookmark google drive files you can also bookmark insta posts reels everything you can bookmark you just have to go there on the share button just before you have to download the wakelet app in your mobile and then uh, go to the share button and as you share different things on whatsapp or save it like some people also do uh, create their own folder in whatsapp 
and they put on uh, keep putting everything in that folder or whatsapp has given a new feature where your name appears and you can share that thing there and it say, it stays there but what happens when you change the whatsapp or when you clear all the data uh, or when there is no backup and backup it's a lot of space and data all your data or information gets wasted or gets lost with the switching of new mobile or when you switch from Android to iOS, Apple, or vice versa. So these things happen. So a lot of uh, loss of data is the prime concern. And to save that, this wakelet is very useful. So you can bookmark anything there. Then you can organize and curate. Like you can create lists or you can create folders. You can create different types of compilations. You can add PDF, you can add image, you can add anything, anything to your compilation, to your folder. You can add information, you can write it there, right there. You can add reminders there. So it is very helpful for organizing and curating. Then for collaboration and share, suppose for example, I'm a teacher, you are students, I have created a homework and I want feedback. I want to give feedback to you online. So what I will do, I will create a homework or anyone compilation, I will go and create it in the wakelet and I will share it with you on your other social media handles. Like for example, the most popular one, WhatsApp. And what you will do, you will only go to that link, open that link. And even if you don't have your account on wakelet, you can add to that uh, home task or homework. So it becomes very easy. And there I can give you the feedback. So this happens only in learning management systems like Microsoft Teams or uh, Google Classroom or when you, uh, you are using Google Drive, there you can write comments. But here, all things are together and you can do it in the wakelet itself. One more thing, there is immersive reader. Suppose you have like uh, saved a lot of articles for reading and you have like no time to read and you want to you want somebody to read it for you you can just go and click on that immersive reader and it will read it for you you can adjust the tone and speed of that reader also and all these things are free i'm talking about all these things are free and wakelet also integrates with zoom with google classroom and other browsers and apps as well so next step after you start using wakelet you will automatically learn how you integrate it with your other apps. So these are four important key features like collaboration, copy collection, embed the collection and immersive readers. So how students can make most of the wakelet, how students can use wakelet. So you can do assignment submissions. You can like compile your all assignment in one place, having different folders. You can do your project research and add your notes there. Keep adding whatever you like, uh, whatever you are reading from other sources. Like there are different tools for managing this research, things like Mendeley's and every other. But this is a simple tool where you can uh, collect and manage your research work or whatever you have read. The references go under it. So everything is like in a beta version and very useful. Then you can build uh, your digital portfolios using Wakelet so that if anybody, any teacher or uh, wants to look at your progress in studies, uh, they can visit your digital portfolio and have a look at that. Even your parents can have a look at that. You can do classroom discussions using Wakelet also. Even uh, these are like very academic things. Uh, I would add, you can create a birthday template for your friend and you can share the link with all your group members. And if everybody goes and adding their own memories and pictures and videos with the friend who is having the birthday, so it becomes a very good compilation and that we have done before. I will give you, uh, I will show you one more, one example when towards the end. So there are, there are certain programs for different types of users. So there is one student ambassador program for students as well. Like there is ambassador for teacher, 
and teacher trainers there is a special program as well these are this is also available on android and app store and browser extension is also available on firefox chrome and edge browsers and you can just get started by signing up creating and sharing your content using the wakelet these are the links to the twitter handle youtube channel and help of the wakelet thank you very much and uh, before uh, wrapping up this uh, i am going to share you one tool to learn language and uh, uh, you must have the you so must have heard the name of this uh, tool or website or app it is like uh, available in all kind of formats it is called do so okay narad i have muted you you can unmute yourself later when you want to ask question so this is the award winning website called duolingo is this visible to you So Duolingo is a website where you can learn any language. Like you can see here, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, Dutch, Japanese, and other languages as well. But you can use this for learning English speaking, basically. And this is the award-winning website. It uses the artificial intelligence. It gathers all the results, all the activities that you do there online on the Duolingo. And it is like a uh, very rewarding kind of feeling you get when you, it's like uh, gamification. You cross different levels, you reach to different level. There is a leaderboard ranking. And yeah, Kashish says it's amazing. Yeah, thank you very much. So this is really amazing app as one of the students has said. And it gives suggestions, it uh, like, uh, some are very fast learners, some are very slow learners. So according to your need and your pace and your place, it gives different suggestions. You can learn anytime, anywhere. So this is a very personalized app and very strongly recommended for the students who want to like excel and improve their English speaking or we say spoken. So that's all from my side. If there are any questions, you can just ask me and we can discuss. Thank you very much. So that's a simple meeting. A meeting. At the... meeting at please, the... uh, uh, Meshram, sir, please uh, mute your mic if you don't want to ask questions. Uh, I have made you host, Manjushri, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Any Actually, questions? Actually, uh, yes, students, if you want to ask any question, you can ask. It was such an interesting session. And, uh, sir, so much of, like, there are so many platforms. I think students use them, but they are not familiar with some of them. I think uh, some so, platforms they are not uh, aware of. And uh, you are a master in all these things. And still... Actually, today we had, yeah, and we'll be uh, showing this on uh, YouTube also. So uh, many would be joining on YouTube. So uh, we'll be definitely again showing this uh, program to the students as the examinations are going on right now. So uh, children are busy. And uh, we really had a great session, sir. And uh, uh, actually, I think... Uh, Nowadays, we can have an offline session so that, you know, the response is there and students, right, it will be a hands-on training and uh, like, uh, it will be, yeah, I think, more effective. Yes, and it will yes. be more effective uh, when you are there in front of them, telling them and uh, this, all these things are so important, you know, they should uh, really learn all these things. It's high time they learned all these things. And uh, Kashish has uh, raised her hand. Yes, Kashish asked, ask. what do you want to ask? Uh, yes, good afternoon, sir, ma'am. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, sir, my, my question is that uh, that uh, you told about Wakelet app. 
that uh, vehiculate app is limited to our country or more than india also it's an international app and there is a large international community of uh, teachers and students using this app worldwide okay and it's completely free all features are free okay sir thank you yeah welcome Actually, question? you know, sir, they, they like it, but they are afraid of speaking in English. <laughs> that is also a problem. They yeah, are, yeah. I that can, is also a I can problem. understand. Yes. So, but uh, yes, students who really join. There are certain limitations when we deliver this online. Yes, yes. Because all these are like workshop kind of things. Right. Use of technology. Right. So, wherever there will be an opportunity, yes, we will come over and interact huh. face to face yes that is uh, on offline is nowadays like uh, walk uh, like children uh, now are interested in offline sessions only you know because uh, they want yes, to attend yes. they want to come to college they in between they had lost touch with college but now they have realized and people have uh, yes somebody's written that offline will be more interesting Yes. So, sir, we yeah. will invite you definitely for more interesting sessions and there would be definitely a huge crowd to listen to you. I promise that. Thank you. And uh, before we uh, wrap up, uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Jaya Mohorkar to uh, formally propose a vote of thanks. Over to Jaya, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Thanks a lot. And on behalf of RS Mundle Dharam Pet Arts and Commerce College, I extend my gratitude to Nadim sir, for such an exhaustive and self-enhancement and um, a wonderful session and uh, associating uh, knowledge of technology with language. It has been just wonderful, sir. Thanks a lot. Your concept of the digital footprint, the LinkedIn, the stellar summary, and especially the wake lot has been really uh, wonderful. And I'm sure our students who are going to be, especially our final year students, who are going to be job aspirants very soon, they will benefit a lot from the Wakelet uh, uh, app, I'm sure. Thanks a lot, sir, for sparing your time and making this platform available to us and uh, enhancing our knowledge. I also thank, thank our you. principal, yes, sir. And I look forward to many more such physical uh, programs. This has been a virtual program. But then uh, the physical, just as Madam said, that students would be very happy if the programs are taken physically because they are also now looking forward to many more such physical participations uh, for being not in touch with uh, these programs for quite some time due to the uh, um, pandemic. And now they are also looking forward to have a physical participation. I also thank our principal, Madam Dr. Tanuja Nafle, for making this platform available to us. And um, the most important person who has been behind all this and is our head of the department, Dr. Manjushri Sardesh Pandey, madam, who is so devoted, who is so dedicated, and her commitment to responsibility has given us not only this, but many more such programs in the past also, especially during the pandemic also, she has been uh, very active person and who has constantly been arranging these programs and making us a part of these programs. So I also thank Manjushri Sarvashpande Madam for this program and look forward once again to many more such programs in the near future. Thank you all. Thank you all the participants. I thank all the senior and superior colleagues also for being a part of this program and I thank the students also for their patient hearing. Thank you once again sir. Thank you for this wonderful program. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Yes, we'll stop here now. Thank you, everyone, for attending the program. Thank you, Nadim, sir.